Nikki, it's more than three years uh, since Grenfell Tower went up in flames and there are still huge numbers of people living in blocks of flats that are similarly at risk of fire. How do you explain to the residents of buildings under 18 metres why they're not covered by the government scheme? Well, you heard in the report there obviously reference to the uh, independent experts uh, panel. Um, it's not an area that I worked on, but I'm assuming it is um, something to do with obviously the height of the buildings and the way that people are potentially evacuated uh, from them and the safety there. But the whole thing is, I mean, in a way it goes back to the first item we were discussing about people's frustrations. And I think ministers would share this as well, having heard them speak, which is how long this is all taking. When we relaunched our campaign last year, one of our key asks of government was for funding to cover all buildings that required remediation, regardless of height. Over a year ago, Mr Jemrick said that height was a crude factor in assessing risk and that there would be a sophisticated and holistic approach. We have not yet seen any evidence of this type of assessment of risk. Whatever the building height, the root cause of the safety issue is the same. So it's deeply unfair that residents in buildings below the arbitrary heart threshold are ruled out of being properly helped. Even if bills are capped at £50 per month, that's still at least another £600 a year that we must try to find. And with interest payments, even an average £30,000 bill could take longer than our lifetime to pay. Shackling us with loans that will inevitably depress property prices across the country, regardless of what Mr Jemrick might hope, is no fair way to treat victims of this building safety crisis. This building is now classed so dangerous that in November 2020, a waking watch was implemented at a cost of £300 per month. This is 20% of my monthly salary and is simply not affordable. The Waking Watch has already been here three months with no sign of a new fire alarm anytime soon. The government has finally announced the Waking Watch Relief Fund. However, the total fund is only £30 million, £22 million of which is ring fenced to eight cities, leaving only £8 million for all other towns and cities in the country. Why should my safety, financial security, and mental health be based on a lottery. The deck is a perfect example of just how arbitrary and ill-judged Robert Jenrick's plan truly is. Three of the six blocks are just over 18 metres tall, so they qualify for funding. The other three blocks, including my own, are just under 18 metres tall, so they do not. And yet, they all look the same, they're all built to the same specification, they're all built with the same materials, and they're all just as dangerous. I lived in Richmond House in Worcester Park, which was completely destroyed by a fire. It was only a four-storey block, but by the time the LFB arrived in nine minutes, all four floors were ablaze. So it's just pure luck that none of my neighbours died. The cavity barriers were missing or defective in the wall, eaves and roof and the compartmentation also fails. We're all in limbo, we're living in temporary accommodation and that could be for up to three years until our homes are rebuilt. Our developer, Barclay, tells us the building performed as it should and I think that just shows that even in really egregious cases like ours, how difficult it is to leave it to individual leaseholders to try and seek justice against those who are responsible. My partner and I worked five jobs between us to try and afford a home together and we put our entire life savings into this flat. We now face remediation costs of an estimate of £60,000 per flat and we have already started paying £3,000 for waking watch alarms and a tenfold increase in our insurance. For us this means that we face bankruptcy and forfeiting our home that we worked so hard our whole lives for. I'm a retiree on a fixed income, a taxpayer and a cladding bore, which means my life and conversations rotate solely around building safety. My one bedroom flat service charge has risen from £2,000 to £5,000 in two years, a 150% increase. Added to this, I have a £40,000 remediation bill, which includes £7,000 in tax. 
Our block's insurance has risen from 36,000 to 330,000. The tax on this is now 10% greater than the original premium. We sit in four layers of clothing under blankets as we cannot afford heating with these huge bills to be paid. Please recognise our plight. We are the victims in this, but the only ones being forced to pay.